We are going to be baking cookies, we are going to be wrapping presents, we're going to be doing everything that we need to do before Christmas arrives. So I hope you give you guys a whole bunch of motivation for Christmas and hopefully some inspiration. So let's get started. You definitely know you have a good recipe when your recipe card looks like this. I will link this recipe down in the description. I definitely need to reprint mine, but I've had this one for years. It was actually a recipe that my husband has had, and I remember having it for the first time when we were just teenagers, and he made them for me for Valentine's Day. So we have made this and tweaked it a little bit every single year to make it completely perfect, and I love it so much. So every single year I actually make like hundreds of Christmas cookies closer to Christmas for my neighbors and our family. I love baking so it's just a great way for me to give back to our neighbors and our family and say thank you for everything that they've done for us throughout the year and to spread a little bit of that Christmas magic. So when I bake those cookies, it's a little bit closer to Christmas than when I'm filming this. So I'm not quite making all of those quite yet, but I did last year and I made a video. So I will make sure to link that in the description for you and in the comments. I always make five or six different Christmas cookie recipes every single year and they're all absolutely delicious. So if you are looking for any, definitely check out that video. So my goal for this video is to really get you into the Christmas spirit for this year. So if there's a tradition or something you do to help yourself get into the Christmas spirit, let me know in the comments what it is. That way you can help anybody else that might be looking for something to help them get into that mindset or just new traditions. I have definitely found the joy of Christmas through baking every single year for my friends and family like I am now, but also just being the magic maker for my daughter Cecilia who's almost three so she's starting to really grasp like the concept of Christmas and Santa and all that Christmas magic. So we have been every single morning putting an elf on the shelf somewhere different in our house and setting him up in these little scenarios and it's just so much fun watching her run to try and find the elf every single morning and knowing that I'm the reason that she's finding all this joy in Christmas just brings me so much joy. So I've set up so many things throughout this video to help motivate you for Christmas and inspire you. So we are baking cookies and then after this I'll be making a DIY with brown sugar and coconut oil hand scrub so that you don't get those dry hands this year for winter. I also put together a free printable on my website and it's just how I like to organize like my gift list and I kind of categorize it by like people's interests and I'm able to narrow down like some more gift ideas through this like little printable that I have that I'll share with you guys later in this video. We are also going to be wrapping presents. I am absolutely obsessed with this wrapping paper cutter that I got, so I cannot wait to share that with you guys. And then at the very end of this video, I share my favorite thing to do at night around Christmas. So as I mix all the ingredients for these chocolate chip cookies together, I just wanted to talk more about being happy in the present moment where you are and also being grateful for what you already have. Comparison is definitely the biggest thief of joy, so comparing your life to somebody else's is never going to bring you any sort of joy. I have definitely found that even just looking back on my life and comparing myself now to where I was five years ago, I see so much growth in myself and at my family and that is such a better comparison than comparing my life to somebody else's who may seem perfect on the internet but absolutely it's not in, in real life. I also see so many people moving so often because I feel like they're trying to find a happiness somewhere else but really you need to sit and make your happiness in your home where you currently are and that is definitely my biggest Christmas wish is for everyone to find their happiness where they are. So I love Giardelli chocolate chips and my chocolate chip cookies. So that is what I'm using. I measured it out per the recipe, but I ended up just having a little bit left. So I just dumped the rest into my mixture, but now I just need to mix it all together. And then we're going to place our scoops onto a baking pan and bake these in the oven so that we can make our house smell delicious while we're doing all of our Christmas prep throughout this video. We'll be singing all the melodies until the sun comes up. These 
So as my grandma would say, our pans are definitely seasoned. They don't look beautiful. They've definitely been used a hundred times. But I also love to put parchment paper down for my cookies. It makes the cleanup so much easier and I think they bake just as perfectly. There is a raw egg in this recipe, but I'm still obsessed with this cookie dough and there's no way I cannot eat it. It's so good. So let me know if you eat raw cookie dough too. So this first batch of cookies I actually put a little closer to the warmer on the top than I usually do and they turned out delicious still so I definitely recommend it if you like a little bit more crisp to your chocolate chip cookies but I'm moving down the rack now so that I can make another batch with just the regular style that I like. These ones were delicious straight out of the oven because they were still nice and gooey on the inside and then they had that crisp all along the outside and it made them delicious. So here's that first batch that we made closer to the warmer and then these are in the middle rack and these ones I would consider being perfect. So we're going to make our hand scrub now. So all I use for this is brown sugar and coconut oil. So it's three parts brown sugar. So I'm using three quarter cups of brown sugar and then I'm using one quarter cup of this extra virgin coconut oil. I will link all of these in the description or just this coconut oil because obviously the other thing is just brown sugar and I mix them both together. So it's super simple and easy. I definitely recommend <laughs> mixing them in a bigger container than I am. This container is actually just a leftover lotion container that I had and I keep just reusing for this mixture because it's perfect. But this is such a good hand scrub for dry hands. It helps exfoliate all the dead skin cells off your hands and the hydration from the coconut oil is superb. <laughs> so it's also a great gift idea. You could definitely put this in like a little mason jar. I'm actually adding just a little bit of vitamin E oil and I do about maybe a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But vitamin E is great for your hair, your, your skin, and your nails. You definitely don't need to add it to this mixture, but it's just a nice little addition if you do have some. So I personally actually keep this tub inside our shower and I will use it anywhere that I'm planning on shaving. So I will scrub my legs with it before I shave and I won't have any of those red bumps on my legs because this helps exfoliate your skin and hydrate it so that it doesn't get any dry flakiness. I will link this free printable in the description below, it's on my website, but it's just a really easy way to put together a gift list or come up with ideas, kind of brainstorm for somebody. And the first column is their name, so you just write it down. The second one is for their interests, so what are they interested in? And then when you can kind of see them all together, I feel like it's a really good way to kind of brainstorm ideas, so it's really nice if you can actually combine all of their interests into one gift idea but if there is somebody on my christmas gift list that i need to get a present for and i'm having such a hard time thinking of something this is what i do 
So I really hope you guys try it out if you have a hard time too. And this is something you could definitely just write on a notebook. You don't have to print this out if you don't have a printer. So I just hope this is a really good idea for you. So we are moving into our master bedroom now. I'm just going to do a quick cleanup in here. I have some stuff laying on the floor. This is our pile of Christmas presents. Things I still need to wrap or put together and kind of organize. I definitely need to make our bed and just get our room nice and cozy for my favorite thing to do at the end of the day. I will also be wrapping presents in here. I really cannot wait to share with you the wrapping paper cutter that I got because I am absolutely obsessed with it. But first, I hope this inspires you to make your own room clean, cozy, and ready for Christmas. Making plans, what we're gonna do? I feel so blessed that I can be with you. Cause God knows that I've been longing for you. I just wanna hold you close. You know the stars are shining just for you. Let's take a walk and we can follow the moon light till we reach a place we can stay. Maybe kiss a bit and dream away. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas a moment we'll fill with Kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day with you. Mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't know if you can see the smile on my face, but I'm so excited because I'm bringing in the wrapping paper. These are the wrapping paper cutters that I got this year, and I am obsessed. I will link them in the description below. I am absolutely obsessed with wrapping presents. It's my favorite thing to do around Christmas. So I'm just going through our pile here. We went out Black Friday shopping. This is the first time I have really ever gone out on Black Friday. So if you're not from the US, Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving, which is always on a Thursday. Thanksgiving is a US holiday and usually the day right after people get right into like their Christmas shopping. So that is called Black Friday. There's usually tons of sales and different things. So I'm curious if there's anything similar in your country. Definitely let me know in the comments. So we had specifically gone out just for the kids on Black Friday. So we have cousins in our family, so we needed to get a present for all of them. And then I, of course, got everything I needed for Cecilia for Christmas that she really wanted. And then we got a couple things for Owen, who is just one. I also picked up these handprints because I'm so obsessed with Cecilia and Owen's handprints. So to give you some gift ideas, I'm going to share what we got. But I got one of these plush mellows and Cecilia's three, but I think all kids are obsessed with these things. She also loves Peppa Pig, so we got her this roadway. She loves cars too, so it's absolutely perfect perfect. This baseball bat and then this is the guitar she absolutely wanted. She asked Sienna for and I just got her this little magnetic fishing thing. I just thought she was gonna have a lot of fun with this and then a little tiny watch. This will be her first ever watch so I know she's gonna love it. This is what we got Owen who is turning one and these are obviously too big for him. He will grow into them but our idea is that Cecilia will play with them too. If you need an idea for any kid, I think Legos are always like a good go-to. So we got some of the cousins each a Lego kit. We got a seven-year-old this hair kit and then a five-year-old this Pikachu because he's obsessed with Pokemon. So I love getting our wrapping paper from Hobby Lobby. It has the grid on the back and then I'm going to be using our new wrapping paper cutter. So this was the first time I had ever used it. And in a little bit, you'll see how excited I am after I use it because it is just absolutely amazing. It makes cutting the paper so easy. It just slides through like butter. I'm just going to be wrapping all the presents that we got for our little cousins. I still need to decide what presents for Cecilia and Owen that we're just going to leave set up and ready to go on Christmas morning. That is something we like to do, so instead of keeping things packaged sometimes, we will remove them from the package and set it all up. That way we don't have to do it on Christmas morning and they can just start playing with it right away. 
So when it comes to like wrapping presents, we actually have two different traditions. And that is that one person in our family will get their present wrapped like 100 times. So nobody ever knows who it's going to be, but I will literally wrap their present like 100 times. So it takes them like a good five minutes to unwrap their present. And it's just a really fun like tradition that we started at least six years ago. And then the other thing we do is just something super silly and crazy. And for this one, I gotta kind of have to put a visual. So I will put a picture on the screen here. So all the siblings have gone in together on a vacuum for a gift for my mother-in-law. And before Christmas even came, she had gone out and bought a vacuum for herself. So she returned it, but it was because they had to like break the news to her that we had gotten the vacuum already. So our other tradition is that my husband and I do something very silly and outrageous. Uh, I just wanted to mention I got these a few years ago from Target and they're only $3 a pack and they're such cute little tags. But anyway, so back to the story. We always do something really silly and just like outrageous to one of the presents that we give. Nobody knows who it's going to be either. So we took this opportunity to make it hers. So. We had put this note on the present, it was covered, and it says, We heard you bought yourself something nice around Christmas. Consider this your first warning. And it's a godfather, so, you know, it's a really good warning. So we had put a whole bunch of just stuffing inside the vacuum cleaner that we had all gifted to her, and then placed it all around this giraffe head that's like a wall mount for our playroom, and then just made it look like it was like this big disaster. <laughs> So that is just another one of our really fun traditions. I'm pretty sure that one started from just getting like a gift card for somebody and we didn't want it to be like super simple like oh here's a gift card. Like it needed to be a little bit more thought put into it. So that's how that one started. So if you have some really fun traditions definitely let me know in the comments. I am obsessed with traditions. I think they're so much fun and it's definitely a way to just bring all that Christmas joy and magic every single year. So when I'm wrapping presents for kids, I always try to pick out a really fun wrapping paper. I will actually usually get a few from the dollar store because they always have some really fun like Disney characters or something like that. This one I already had and I love the Hobby Lobby wrapping paper, so it's the one I picked. But I also used to, before I had kids, put like a ribbon around it and everything to make it look super cute and pretty, but then kids always have the hardest time unwrapping their presents and then it makes it a little less fun, I think, for them. So I stopped putting ribbons around the kids. The adult presents I do try to make look a little prettier and I'm definitely known in our family for that. I'm known for just like wrapping our presents and making them look really good but it's just something I really enjoy doing. I love decorating, so this is my way of decorating presents and it brings me a ton of joy. I love wrapping presents. So I really hope I give you some inspiration for wrapping presents. I know it's not everybody's favorite thing to do, but I will also be sharing after I'm done wrapping a few more of these, what I like to do at the end of the day around Christmas. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep. On a cold winter's night that was so deep, no. So now that we have some presents wrapped, our room is nice, cozy, and clean, I'm going to start my favorite thing that I like to do at the end of the day. So I'm taking my chocolate chip cookies that we made earlier and watching the most cheesy Christmas romance movie. 
theme is a cabin in a winter wonderland. This video is also gonna have to be several parts, so make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up for me to let me know and let's get started. To set the mood while I'm decorating, I love putting on a Christmas movie. I was gonna have you guys guess this one, but it is way too easy. And I love lighting a Christmas candle. This one is apple balsam and I got it from Home Goods last year and I loved the container that it was in and it also smells amazing. So as I go through this video and we decorate together, I'm gonna to be sharing all of my favorite decorating tips. I'm gonna be sharing all of our decorations and where I got them from. I like decorating very traditionally, but as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm more theme oriented this year, so I definitely want to make things look very winter wonderlandy. I almost want it to be like I'm sitting in a log cabin in the woods. That's my goal this year for my Christmas decorations. So I always start by pulling all of our Christmas decorations out of our closet. The closet I actually keep them in is in Owen's room. He is nine months old and I had to do this right before his nap. I pulled out all of the decorations and put them in the hallway and then brought them into our dining room here. This is where I love to just set everything out on the table so I can see what I have to work with because I can't always remember all the decor that I've gotten. I have to see what I have in front of me. So I'm kind of putting things grouped together. This entire container is actually just Christmas ornaments and I will be doing that in part two. So any boxes that are unnecessary right now, I'm just gonna move out of the way. So in these boxes, I actually grouped everything that's gonna be going in our master bedroom, Cecilia's room, Owen's room, and the rest are just stuff for our Christmas tree. So I'm gonna pack these away for now because they will be in part two of my Christmas decorate with me. I already have so much packed into this first part that I just could not squeeze in anymore. So I definitely have to do several parts of my Christmas decorate with me because we have so much decor and I definitely go a little bit overboard. <laughs> In these bigger bins, I always keep our garland and our greenery and also all of our Christmas stuffed animals and sing-alongs. This little dinosaur sings, so I asked Cecilia if she remembered it from last year and I'm not sure if she did, but she still has so much fun with these little sing-along stuffed animals. My mother-in-law had gotten us about three of these last year that you press the button and they sing and I don't know if she just hates me or if she just knew Cecilia was really gonna love them. <laughs> so at this point, I just needed to go through these bins to make sure there wasn't anything hiding in here because when I pack Christmas away, I just make it a big Tetris like game. I just put things wherever I can, wherever they fit, because I know I'm just gonna set everything on the table anyway. And we don't have that much storage space here in Florida, so I just pack everything wherever I can fit it. And so these bins now just have all of our garland and greenery in it, and I have all of our decor sitting up here. I know how much of a hot mess this looks like right now, but it really all just comes together. So these hooks I already have on top of our cabinets. I usually just leave them there because I know I'm gonna put this garland up every single Christmas. So I'm gonna start here because this garland always has those fake little pine needles that fall off everywhere. So I know I'm gonna have to like wipe down our counter. So I don't want to decorate that, have these fall off and then I'm gonna have to clean it again. Last year I didn't put this garland up here because I was pregnant and I didn't want to get up on a ladder. So this year I was so excited to put the garland up and it really just makes a statement in our kitchen and it always ends up like drawing your eye up too. So it feels like our kitchen is so much bigger when I put this garland up here. We don't usually put anything on top of our cabinets because it just gets really dusty up there and I just don't want it to look too cluttered anyway. So I am always excited when Christmas comes around so that I can put this garland up. So this garland I got from Hobby Lobby and it is very inexpensive because it is just plain garland. You can add like decorative things to it or whatever you like. This little reef I got from Hobby Lobby as well one year 
and I always just put a little ribbon on it and hang it on top of our kitchen cabinets. This is Owen just having so much fun with the Christmas stuffed animals, so I had to include some of the clips here for you. And now I'm going to get started on our coffee bar. This is actually the first time I'm sharing our new coffee bar with you guys, so we've just built this top area and I love it. It looks so much better if you remember what was here before. Um, so I was just using that sign to start my chalkboard drawing. I do a new chalkboard drawing every season and this one I'm going to be making hot cocoa themed because I'm going to make a little hot cocoa bar here. This is definitely one of my favorite decorative areas that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I always put together a Pinterest board of just ideas and inspiration before I start decorating for Christmas. One of the things I saved this year was a hot cocoa bar and I wanted to make it so badly and I'm so happy with how it turns out. So I'm starting with the chalkboard drawing and this is also something I got inspiration from Pinterest for. I had done a quick sketch on the paper that I'm holding so that I kind of had an idea of where to put everything on the chalkboard and you'll see it get a lot better as I go. The like hot chocolate that I'm doing right now, this font gets even more detailed, but I always start out with a rough sketch first and then add in all the details later. So I know not everybody is super artsy. I love drawing. I took several drawing classes and art classes in high school. But if you are not very good at drawing, there are a ton of pictures on Pinterest, okay? And then just print them out and put them on a projector or they make little projectors for your phone. So you just have the picture project onto your chalkboard and all you have to do is trace the drawing and then you will look like you are an artist. <laughs> Just an idea because I always get people that say they would love for me to come over and do a drawing for them, but obviously I can't always do that. So I am so happy with how this ended up turning out. So now that I have kind of my backdrop, I'm going to start decorating all around it. I'm going to start with just some simple garland and I'm going to put it all the way around the chalkboard. The theme, as you can remember, that I'm going for is a winter wonderland inside a cabin so i really wanted to make it look like this was outdoorsy like all the garland i want to be surrounded by evergreens and just have that warm cozy feeling inside a cabin as well so the warm coziness is going to come from this hot cocoa bar after i get this garland nice and attached to our coffee bar here i was able to just kind of set it around it and it stayed where it needed to be. I'm going to clean off the coffee bar and take everything off of it so that I can put down a table runner and the rest of the decor. So I'm going to be keeping our coffee on here because this is our coffee bar, but I'm also going to be setting up the hot cocoa here in the center and then our tiered tray. So this runner I had gotten from Home Goods a couple years ago. I have one that matches for our dining room table as well. And I'm just gonna start putting the main pieces back here. This is everything I got for our tiered tray. I got it all from Hobby Lobby new this year. And I love these little blocks so much. They're perfect for these little tiered trays. I also got this old fashioned hot cocoa sign here for the cocoa bar. And then they had these really cute whipped cream and peppermint signs and this hot chocolate sign. Everything goes perfectly for our hot chocolate bar. Hobby Lobby always has all these cute little things. I got this candy cane sign from the Target Dollar Shop area a few years ago. I've had it for a while. I love this little tin sign. And then this peppermint candy cane garland I got from Hobby Lobby last year. I saw it again this year, so it's still there and I'm obsessed with it. I think it's so cute and I definitely think it goes with like the hot cocoa bar. Okay, so if you don't see anything, you definitely need to see the end of this hot cocoa bar because it turns out so, so cute. So I'm just putting 
our Swiss Miss, that's our favorite hot cocoa mix, into just a clear bin on the side. And then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of really cute glass jars with all of our hot chocolate toppings. It turns out so cute, you have to see it. Anyway, so before I get started on that, I wanted to put together the tiered tray here. I love decorating this for every single season and I'm so happy with how it turns out this year. So I'm putting all of those little signs that I showed you from Hobby Lobby and just put lacing them like in and around on this tray because those are the biggest items. And that's how I like to kind of layer everything. I put all the big items first and then this red garland I got from Hobby Lobby and it's just a whole bunch of red beads and I'm just gonna place it in and around on the tiered tray. It really just gives it that extra pop of color. And then these peppermint candy cane, they're like little Christmas ornaments. I'm gonna be stuffing inside all of the mugs that I put on here. And I just thought that looked so cute with the candy canes that I have on the top. And there's something just about like a peppermint hot cocoa that is just so warm and delicious. So I got this Christmas pick from Hobby Lobby. They always have so many really cute picks. They have like an entire aisle, like floor almost to the ceiling of Christmas picks. So I'm cutting off all the pieces so that I can use it as stuffing inside my tiered tray. It really just finishes off the whole piece and makes it look a lot more full and just more complete. Especially since I already have a lot of white and red in here, so this just gives it that green and fullness that it really needs. So I got all of these glass jars from Hobby Lobby. I got five of the really small ones, five medium ones, and then two larger jars. And I'll show you them all here in a little bit, but I needed to wash them all off first since I was gonna be putting food that we were going to be eating. It's not just decoration into these glass jars. And after I was done washing all of them, I decided to dry them all off by hand because I really didn't want any like watermarks on these because I wanted them to look nice and crystal clear. It has everything that I got to put inside them. So red, green, and chocolate sprinkles, white chocolate chips, regular chocolate chips, toffee. I also got peppermints and marshmallows, of course. <laughs> So in the two larger jars, I'm putting the marshmallows, of course. You cannot have hot chocolate without marshmallows. And in the other large one, I'm putting all of our peppermints. I think it's delicious to have one of these in your coffee or your hot chocolate. In the medium jars, I put just regular chocolate chips in one. These are also delicious to mix in with your hot chocolate to make it even more chocolatey. I also got white chocolate chips just to give it a little more color, and then some toffee, this one's by Heath, and then in the other jar I decided to put these little chocolate sticks, and oh my gosh, they're just so delicious. These last ones, I'm like the smaller jars, I'm putting all the sprinkles, so the green sprinkles, red sprinkles, and chocolate sprinkles. I got all of this from Walmart. And then in the last small jar, I'm putting some sea salt, this is actually kosher salt now because I didn't have any sea salt, but I really thought this needed a little board to put on, so I used a cutting board that we already had to just put everything on it to make it look more like a serving tray, and it just really finished off this nice little hot chocolate bar topping area. I also got these cute little serving scoops from Hobby Lobby. I thought these were perfect for these. 
and I also wanted to share these little signs that I got from the dollar store so if you wanted to label everything you could with these they're perfect this little markers from the dollar store as well it's more like a like wet crayon I don't know how else to explain it but it still works really well and then it just clips perfectly onto like an open container of this and then you can use a little scoop in each one and serve it that way so I just love this idea and I would be obsessed with it if I went to a party and it was there. I also love that all of the containers have lids so I can just leave it out here and I don't have to worry about having to put it away every single day or ants getting to it or anything. It's part of our decor but we also get to eat it and it's also super delicious and yummy. Snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size. Is so I'm moving under our bar here in our kitchen. I also have these little hooks here. I keep them up all year round just so that around Christmas it's super easy for me to hook the garland up right here. The first time I put the garland up right here, I thought it might be a problem if somebody was sitting here. But when we are hosting for Christmas or Thanksgiving, it's really never been a problem. And usually people don't sit here anyway because our bar is just covered with food. It becomes kind of like a buffet or serving area instead of a sit down area. So our fireplace is a huge area that you definitely need to see me decorate. I just think it turns out so well, so I don't want you to miss it. But right now I'm just doing a couple small things around our kitchen. One of the things I love doing is setting up our little dish tray here. I this year decided to do just a small Christmas tree here. I thought it was just super simple and cute. And then this tray I got from Target recently and I love it. It was only like $12 and then decided to put just a little Christmas tree and the candle on there. And I also love doing a letter board. I don't know if letter boards are still in style. I think they are. I don't know, but I'm not usually one to like follow trends or anything. I kind of just go with my own flow of what makes me happy and letter boards definitely do that. So this year I decided to do the Merry Christmas, you filthy animal quote and it just really brings a smile to me and my family so I decided to put it right here in our kitchen for everybody to see. I like to get a lot of my decor from discount places and this one is from Burlington. They always have a ton of really cute decor that is extremely affordable. I got this little tree from Walmart this year. I thought it went perfect with my theme. I definitely went and got everything that I could that was covered in snow. I love little twinkle lights. You can definitely just get these off of Amazon. They come in really long strands, really short strands, but I love adding little lights to my decor wherever I can because at night I love turning them on and it just adds so much more like excitement to all the decorations. You can also not decorate the kitchen without some Christmas kitchen towels. It's so easy to put up here, but I promise you this is not going to stay very long because Owen is crawling around everywhere and loves to pull everything off of the counter that he can reach and these towels are definitely one of them. So this little sign I actually got from Hobby Lobby this year, I wanted to put it on top of the stove here but it didn't fit so I kind of had to work with what I already had. So this Christmas tree sign and these little Christmas uh, tiny trees. I don't know how else to explain these. Anyway, I got these from Target one year and I love them. I thought this was super cute. And then I decided to put that sign over here with this. I got it from Marshalls. It has a little bit of a sticker residue, but it's a little cookie tray. And I have our bottle warmer, so it's milk and cookies. So I have this little tray here. I thought it was punny. Okay, so I have some really fun ideas for our fireplace and I really hope I'm not getting in over my head on this. I hope it doesn't take me too long, but it's gonna be so much fun. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I got all of these from the dollar store. They had these really cute snowflakes. They're actually covered in like a dust to make them look like they're covered in actual snow. I got some smaller ones, bigger ones. I got some fake snow and then I also got um, just a smaller thing of snowflakes from the dollar store and this fishing line I got from Walmart. It's a huge thing of fishing line and I'm gonna thread 
all these cotton balls. I'm going to shred them apart, make some bigger, smaller, and thread them through the fishing line to make it look like it is snowing over our fireplace. So I'm going to show you how I hot glue them, space them apart and everything, but I'm going to be hanging them above our fireplace like from the ceiling to make it look like it is snowing. So I measured our fireplace so I knew exactly how long to make the fishing line. So I'm cutting all of that to size now. And then I did 18 pieces total. So now I am just kind of shredding apart some of the cotton balls. I'm making some bigger, I'm making some smaller and just making them all different sizes because snow is not all the same. I know how cheesy this sounds and I was so worried about how this was actually gonna turn out because I was gonna put so much work into this. I wanted it to look good. So I am so happy with how it turns out and it's definitely a little cheesy, but I really think that's what Christmas needs to be about sometimes. The cheesiness, the corniness of it just makes it so much more fun. If you are too serious about Christmas and the holidays, like you're just not gonna have as good of a time. So I really wanted to bring that corniness and cheesiness to our decor this year. Plus everything that I put on the fireplace this year just looks so good that this snow just really ties it all together. So I got a little sidetracked, but I did one strand first so that I knew exactly how many cotton balls to thread onto each of these strands. So I had 22 cotton balls on each strand and then I lined them all up and had them ready to be hot glued so that I could do them all at once. So I'm using like four fingers to space each of the cotton balls and then hot gluing each one four fingers apart. And I ended up just hanging them all here in our kitchen. And then I'm gonna use these hooks and I cannot reach the top of our fireplace. So I will be using this little claw to hold the command hook with the strand of snow on it to stick it to the ceiling and our fireplace. And you might ask me, so Shelby, how are you going to get all of this down when you need to take all your Christmas decor down? And my answer is, I have no idea. We will probably need another ladder. Maybe if I just pull on these, it'll just come right off. I don't know. So we will find out together when that time comes but for now i'm going to enjoy these snowballs on our fireplace so it was getting pretty late by the time i finally got all of these up and i worked a little bit through the night on this it wasn't too late i promise it didn't really take me that long and i decided to do a couple on the ceiling as well to give it just a little bit more depth because having them all lined up like this was a little bit um, I don't know, bland is not exactly the word I wanted to say, but it really needed some depth to it. So here is the morning after. So you can kind of see the final product in the light here in the daylight. So I added the rest of the snowflakes that I got from the dollar store. I used command hooks to hang all of those. I got this garland from Walmart and I am obsessed with it. I think it's actually really nice garland. I love that it's covered in the snow. And then of course I needed to fluff it up and I'm so excited to show you how this mantle turned out. I have been obsessed with the garland kind of going off the side of the mantle. So that was definitely like my big idea for putting this mantle together. I also really wanted it to go along with my winter wonderland theme. So this entire mantle is gonna have everything covered in snow. So these picks that I'm adding right now, I had used last year. I got them from Hobby Lobby. Last year I used them on our dining room table. So I'm just taking them and I'm kind of like fluffing them and sticking them inside the garland that I put in there. And I really just want to have this like corner on the mantle just draping over and I just think it looks gorgeous. When I saved all the ideas off of Pinterest of like mantles that were similar to this where it had it draping over the side, 
I had no idea how easy it was actually going to be. These picks I got from Hobby Lobby as well. This is the same pick that I cut apart and put inside our tiered tray. So I'm going to take about three of these and just kind of add it to the corner here to give it a little bit more fluff, a little bit more detail, and really just fill in this garland. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. I'm going to be filling in with some snow covered trees now and this smaller one I got from Hobby Lobby this year. I thought it was so cute. I grabbed a couple of them and I'm using them here on the mantle. This black and white Merry Christmas sign I got from Target one year and I think it's so cute. They always have so much really cute decor, Christmas decor, like in their dollar shop area. And then these Christmas ornaments I got from Walmart this year. I was so happy with a lot of their selection. And I'm gonna be using these just kind of in and around on the garland to give it just a little bit more pop. I'm just placing them there. I think I will go back though and put hooks on them so that they stay a little bit better just in case somebody brushes up against this. I think I also want to group like three of them together so I'll tie three of them together and then put them in. But I am just so happy with how this fireplace turned out. I am just obsessed with it. Well here I just put up a gallery wall so I'm going to put a whole bunch of pictures in these frames and this year I printed out all of our Christmas pictures so my plan is to change out these frames with like seasonal pictures I'm gonna put fall ones in there I'm gonna put Christmas ones in here and then I think for spring and summer they're probably gonna be the same but you kind of get the idea so every single year we are gonna be able to enjoy all of our favorite Christmas memories and family pictures and I'm just so happy with how this turned out. You guys loved the hot cocoa bar in part one of my Christmas clean and decorate, and it has been the biggest hit with my family, so I definitely recommend putting one of these together. So as I get to sip on my hot cocoa, I'm gonna move it right into our master bedroom. Last year was the first year I put up like a Christmas tree and decorated in here. So I am gonna be adding just a little bit more this year, and it's just, so like romantic and magical when I decorate for Christmas in here. I was completely obsessed last year and I make it even better this year. So I'm continuing my theme of a cabin in a winter wonderland. And as I go through this video, I'm gonna share all the new decorations I got this year, along with all the other ones that I've had in the past and where I've gotten everything from. So this first piece of garland is from Hobby Lobby. I got it last year and I am completely obsessed with it. It is so pretty and they have it again this year. It's definitely like in their main stock for their Christmas decor. I love all the snowy crystals on it. It went perfectly with my winter wonderland, so I decided to use it again this year. I'm vacuuming up all the little beads that fell off of that garland. That is one thing I learned last year was to wait to put on the sheets until after I put up the garland because all those little crystals like to fall off and then you're in bed with what feels like a hundred little crumbs and then you have to wash your sheets again. So vacuum those all off so that I could put on our sheets. These ones I got from Amazon so I will make sure to link these in the description for you because they are so comfortable and they were so affordable. I feel like plaid is definitely a big theme with cabins so I think that's perfect for my cabin in a winter wonderland theme. I also use this same type of plaid on the ribbon that I'm going to be putting on our tree in here. The Christmas tree in our bedroom it just makes this room feel so romantic and magical. I cannot wait to share it with you. I'm so happy with how I decorated it this year. I went so many years without decorating our master bedroom because it's just not an area anybody except my husband and I see, but I'm decorating it for us and our own memories as a family. I cannot wait to sit in our bed and watch Christmas movies with our daughter and our son and have the lights from the Christmas tree on. Just helping to set the atmosphere with decorations is just one of the few things I love to do to help just create those little memories every single year. 
So the tree I'm decorating now was my husband and I's first Christmas tree. It's a little shorter than our main one, which is in the living room, and I will be decorating later in this video. This one has the ability to leave off some of the limbs, so I like to leave off like three or four of them in the back so that I can scoot it close to the corner in our master bedroom and it just fits so much better in here. So now I'm going to put on the lights. For this tree, I put them on just a little bit differently than I would like our main living room tree just because it doesn't really have like branches, but I still go up and down with Christmas lights rather than going all the way around because I feel like it gets so much more coverage this way and it's also so much easier than going around and around the tree. <laughs> this angel was actually my parents over 33 years ago. As soon as my brother and I moved out, they started to do a lot of traveling, so I'm just holding on to it until they settle back down and start decorating again. Whenever I put ribbon on a Christmas tree, I love layering it. I think it just gives it so much more dimension. I tie them together at the top and then I put them together at each tuff and then kind of pull them apart so that it really just gives it a lot more detail and fullness to the ribbon. Ribbon is usually the part that takes me the longest when I'm putting it on a Christmas tree. I feel like most of the time I can't get it exactly where I want it to be, so I will constantly go back and forth and retouch it, rework it. Sometimes I have to just pull it completely off and start over. But with every passing year, I think I get just a little bit better at putting it on and it doesn't take me as long. This is ribbon I've used in the past, so I already had the ends cut, but I love just that finishing detail. I am taking out all of our glass and breakable ornaments and putting it on the tree in here. We have a almost three-year-old and a nine-month-old son, so anything we have that is extremely breakable, I put on the tree in here. All of these ornaments I thought went perfectly with our log cabin theme mostly because of the plaid, but I got these from the dollar store. So I'm just going to work them into this tree along with the ornaments that are glass and breakable. I was happily surprised by the selection at the dollar store this year. I got a few other things that I'll be sharing with you. I love the challenge of making things look good, but on a budget. These picks I got from Hobby Lobby a few years ago and I love using these to just fluff a tree. The biggest thing to pay attention to when you're buying picks to put on your tree is if it already has some evergreen foliage on it, make sure it matches the tree that you already have. So these snowflakes I got from Walmart this year, they each come in a pack of 20 and they are so cute, so sparkly, and they go perfectly with my cabin in a winter wonderland theme. So I'm actually just placing them in and around on top of branches instead of hanging them. Thought it looked a lot nicer that way and I was using them more as like fluff and filling on our tree. These ornaments I got from Walmart this year as well and I'm grouping three of them together. I'm just using a metal hook that I have and twisting them tightly together to make it into like a group of three snowballs and I'm just fluffing the rest of our tree with these. I love having the Christmas tree in our room. It's just like a childhood dream of mine, just sleeping next to a lighted Christmas tree. It gives me all the warm and cozy Christmas feels. After I'm done decorating any tree, it's always time to vacuum because there are always just a bunch of pine needles and glitter all over the floor. So we are going to be making paper bag snowflakes. I cannot wait to show you how these turn out. They are so easy to make and so cool. So in this pack of 50 white paper bags from Walmart, I have four that have nine paper bags in them and two piles that have eight. I went ahead and just made one snowflake first so that way I could get a feel for how it was going to go, how it was going to look, and if I could do anything better with the other ones. So I'm cutting it out now. I had just glued it. I will show you how to do that in a little bit, but you can do any design on your snowflake and they all turn out differently. And when you open it, you get the grand reveal and I cannot get over just how beautiful these are. 
They're just like a regular paper snowflake except they're 3D and absolutely beautiful. I just want to put them everywhere around our house. <laughs> So I found the easiest way to glue these, do the bottom first, I'm using a hot glue gun. So just one strip across the bottom and then I'm gluing nine paper bags together and then after the bottoms are all glued, you just glue down the center. So straight down the center on every single bag and then you can cut it to whatever design you want. So these are all the designs that I cut out and I will show you how each of these look. This first one is my absolute favorite. I'm completely obsessed. It's so beautiful. I cannot wait to put it on our wall. So after I make sure it opens and that it works well, I'm going to take the hot glue and run it down the center of the opening and then stick it together. So I will link the blog post in the description of the website that I used to reference how to make these. And they actually didn't use hot glue, they used a glue stick so that it wouldn't burn their kids, so their kids could easily make these. The only thing with the glue stick though is you have to clip all the bags together and wait for it to dry. I'm going to be using these in my winter themed decor on our wall and I will show you guys in a little bit, but this could totally be a really fun craft to do with your kids. Mine are definitely not quite old enough to do this. Cecilia wouldn't be able to cut through the bags or anything. She's not really old enough to use scissors. She's only three. So I cannot wait to do these kind of things with them when they're older. But I'm totally taking advantage of them being little right now. There are so many different crafts that I do with them every single day. There's also a tradition that I do every single year. I started it with Cecilia and now I get to do it for the first time with Owen. And I will share that with you guys later in this video. So I just wanted to update a few different things on the mantle. I decorated this in part one of my Christmas Decorate With Me, but I'm using the same ornaments that I used in our bedroom and I'm grouping them together just like I did in there into balls of three and then attaching it to the garland on our mantle. And I thought this just looked so much better than the random balls everywhere and it looked a little bit more, I don't know, I guess professional. So now I'm adding little icicles and I thought this just made a gorgeous little effect on our fireplace. I got these from the dollar store and I'm completely obsessed with them. They are plastic, but they are like just as shiny and gorgeous as like glass ones without having to worry about little kids grabbing them and breaking them. So this is our main Christmas tree. I got this tree topper from Hobby Lobby last year and it's pretty simple, but it just glows and it's a really pretty star. I'm gonna start by putting all the lights on the tree and for this tree, I really tie them around every single branch. I go from the inside all the way to the outside and I try to tie them as tightly as possible. It's just gorgeous when you take the time to light your tree properly instead of just going in circles around the tree. It gives the tree a lot more dimension and it's so much more bright and full. I also know trees come pre-lit now, so this one actually used to have lights on it and we cut them all off because they went bad and I refused to have a tree just for a few years and then the lights go bad and then to buy a new one. I'm also going to be putting ribbon on this tree. So this one I got from Walmart. It's a beautiful plaid. The silverish white ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm grouping them together again just like I did with the master bedroom. I just like to pull them apart from each other a little bit so that they're kind of sitting next to each other to give it more depth. I also cut the ends to give them a nice finished look. It always takes a little bit of time to get the ribbon exactly where I like it, but it's totally worth it and I definitely recommend getting ribbon that has wire in it. It makes it easier to sculpt it in the way that you like. It also makes it look more bouncy rather than flat on your tree. So now that I got the ribbon all nicely placed on this tree, I am going to put these snowflakes in it. These are the same ones I used in our master bedroom from Walmart and I'm placing them really far inside the tree. I'm using them more as like filler and to really just pull in my theme of the winter wonderland. These are the icicles that I got from the dollar store. I had used these on the mantle just a little bit ago and I'm going to use the rest of them here on our tree. So they have 
three different sizes, small, medium, and large, and I just think they look so pretty against all the lights. I'm using these same ball ornaments from Walmart that I used in our master bedroom, the mantle, and now I'm just using them on every single tuck on the ribbon for this tree. When decorating trees, I definitely think it's all about layering. So I have our base layer, I guess is what I would call it. Now I'm gonna put on all of our family ornaments. These are just a few of my very favorite. We have so many from different trips that we've gone on and a few that are just extra special to us. And I love looking at all of these special memories every single year. I wanted to share this one because it's such a good idea and I definitely want to do it with Owen and Cecilia, but it's my husband's Christmas wish list. My mother-in-law had made it and the rest of the ornaments are a lot of just memories that we have made throughout the years. This one my dad carved out of wood for Cecilia's first Christmas. And last year I made a few different ornaments out of just wood from the craft store and then I used Mod Podge to attach the uh, just like regular printed pictures onto them and they turned out so cute. So now I'm gonna finally use these snowflakes. So I cleared off everything from this wall and took everything down from the top of the bookcases. I'm gonna start by making just a chain out of paper and I was kind of going for the scene in Elf where he decorates the entire store with paper snowflakes and chains and it's so pretty. Just like my fireplace mantle, when I was making the snow falling with the cotton balls, I had no idea how this was going to turn out. I just had a vision in my head and I didn't know if it was actually going to turn out looking how I wanted it to look, but it totally does and I cannot wait for you guys to see the ending. So I'm just using command hooks and then fishing line to attach these chains to our wall, these paper chains. So the paper chain I'm hanging right now is actually an inch and a half thick on every single chain. And then I'm gonna hang a second chain. Those are all one inch thick. And these are so easy to make. I actually used to make these every single Christmas, except each one would have a number on it and you would tear one off every single day until it was Christmas. So it was like a countdown to Christmas. So I got pretty late when I was filming this, so it was getting really hard to film in the dark, but I did use command hooks to attach all of our paper snowflakes on here. So here is the end result in the morning. I added some white tinsel garland and some fairy lights to the paper chains, and I just think it looks so magical, so fun, a little quirky, but that is what Christmas is all about. I love Christmas traditions, so I really wanted to share this one that I had started with Cecilia. We got them each of my little tree. This is Owen's first year, so I got all of these little pieces from Hobby Lobby. They have my little Christmas section full of all these little cute ornaments for tiny little trees. So this tree is for Owen's room and Cecilia is helping him decorate his tree. And Cecilia's tree is pink, so I'm setting this up in her room so that she can decorate it all by herself. So I got all these little ornaments from Hobby Lobby as well. So this tradition is just for them to decorate their own little trees for their own room and just have fun with it. Like I help minimally, only if she asks me to. So she had asked me to put the garland around the tree and then she's putting on all her little ornaments herself, so I just cannot wait to see how she decorates the tree every single year and how much better it gets every year, and I don't change anything about the tree after she's done. But first I'm going to decorate our dining room table, which is why I cleaned it off. So this table runner I got from Home Goods, and then I stopped in Ross and was so excited to find these. It's like a complete steal, $8 a piece. There are so many different things you can do with these, but I like to put them together into a centerpiece on our dining room table. So I'm actually just putting both of them together and then I'm kind of fluffing it and getting the different pieces to lay where I like them to go. And then I like to add candlesticks. These ones I got from Hobby Lobby and they are part of their regular stock so they're there year round and they do go 50% off. 
So I've shown in previous videos how I like to put these candlesticks inside stems that I like to put on our table, but I always put the taller one in the center and then the two shorter ones on either end. And this is just a really inexpensive way to put together a gorgeous centerpiece and it's so easy. Anybody could do this. So right off our dining room where I just made that centerpiece is our foyer. So we are going to be making a really beautiful garland around our front door. But first I'm going to put these reefs on our front door and these ones I got from Ross as well. They were only $20 a piece and I got two of them because we have a double door. So I like to put two reefs on our front door and I'm just dusting off our door first because it is covered in cobwebs and bugs. I love making our front door warm and inviting because it is always the first thing you are greeted with when you come visit our home. So I'm putting up the reefs now and after I put these up, we're going to move right into our foyer and put together a gorgeous piece of garland around our front door. So this plain old garland is 60% off at Hobby Lobby right now. So I'm just taking the time while both my kiddos are up. Owen is 10 months and Cecilia is almost three and they're gonna help me fluff this and then as soon as they go down for their nap then I'm gonna be decorating it and making it look just absolutely gorgeous. I really surprised myself with this piece of garland and it is so easy to put together. I definitely think anybody can do it. It's also incredibly inexpensive when you do it this way. When you buy garland that is pre-made and all put together they can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars but this is just plain piece of garland and then we are going to decorate it with just different ornaments and ribbon and I use a couple different picks and I'll share everything with you along the way. It is so easy but I'm just attaching the garland just plain to our wall first and then from all the fluffing there are just a whole bunch of little tiny pine needles everywhere so I'm going to vacuum those up so that Owen doesn't get any in his mouth and so that it stays contained and I don't end up accidentally tracking it all throughout our house. So I'm going to be taking everything that I got recently from Hobby Lobby out of these bags and I'll share everything as soon as I put it on the table. Hobby Lobby's Christmas supplies are all 60% off right now. Their fall when I went in was 75%. So I grabbed so many fall things for next year that I cannot wait to use. But anyway, I got these hooks to help hold on everything to our garland. I got six of these picks. They have so many picks to choose from. Got one of these bins of ornaments. And then I got a few different white ornaments. So I got two packs of these four. This is like a 12 pack of simple white ornaments. And then I love these ornaments. They're like snowballs. <laughs> so I'm starting by putting the picks on each of the corners and then a couple in the center. And then you'll see I'll put a couple on either side. And this is just kind of my beginning stages of putting this garland together. And the picks really just bring in the snow for me because my theme this year is a cabin in a winter wonderland. So I'm going for very um, like white snowy. That's why I have all these white ornaments. And then I'll also be putting in a plaid with the ribbon. So that's kind of for the cabin feel. So I like clustering ornaments and I'm going to start with just clustering two of them together. I like to use the little hooks and then I just twist them together so that they're held nice and tight and then it's easy to group two of them together. So on my pick there was already one large red ornament and I like doing groups of three so I am putting like two of the ornaments together next to each of my picks and then I'm going to use these snowball ornaments. So I did a close up of this so you could see I tied the string really close to the base and then I was able to use the hook to get the hook nice and close to the snowball so that it's tight on the garland when I tie it. Otherwise it's 
just floppy and loose and flies all around and you can't get it where you want it. So if you couldn't tell already, I'm trying to keep things as symmetrical as possible as I'm adding ornaments to the garland. Now I'm going to cluster a smaller one with a medium one and put them next to the snowball. So when putting together this kind of garland, you could definitely deck it out with whatever ornaments you can find. There are so many to choose from. These ones are, I think, very basic and they still look absolutely gorgeous when they're done. But that's one of the reasons I love putting garland together myself because I can be creative and put whatever I like on it, especially if I'm doing a theme. So now I'm just going to take all the really small ornaments and fit them in and around on the garland, just kind of filling in all the rest of the blank spaces. And then once I get all of these in, I'll be able to put the ribbon. So my biggest tip for putting together garland is definitely to start with your bigger items first. So my biggest items were the picks and then I used my bigger round ornaments and then I'm now filling in with the smaller ornaments. And to put all of these on, I'm just using the regular metal hooks that you would use on ornaments and just wrapping it around and tightening them that way. I've seen other people use um, like pipe cleaners and you can use any kind of wire, whatever you have. You can make them tight enough so that you can save it and reuse it every single year or you can make them a little loose like I did so that it's a little easier to take it all apart because I'm going to be doing it a little different next year. I have another theme that I want to do that I have already planned, but now that I have all the ornaments on, I'm going to be finishing it off with ribbon. So this white ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and this plaid ribbon I got from Walmart this year. I like to do my ribbon in smaller sections and I measure it by doubling the length of that section and then I tie them together and start at the top and work my way down or across and just kind of weave it in between the ornaments until I am happy with how I place it. I also like to cut off the ends if any of them are left just to finish them off and make them look pretty. And then I'm just going to finish the rest of the garland section by section. And after I'm done with the garland here, I still have a few more things that I want to share with you guys. We're going to be doing some more paper snowflakes and I have a snowy village scene that I'm going to be putting on our TV console that is super cute. So I hope you stick around. So I am absolutely obsessed with the paper lunch bag snowflakes, so I decided to make more for this video. I've already made them in my Christmas Clean and Decorate With Me part two, so this is just gonna be a quick rundown, but I'm gonna glue all of them together. You just do a glue strip along the bottom for nine bags, and then you glue down the center of all of those bags, and then you cut them all like a regular, paper snowflake and there are so many different designs you could be creative and cut them however you like the funnest part is after you've cut them to open them up to see what they're gonna look like share with you where I decided to put these. So here is my little jerry rig, very similar to what I did in my Christmas Clean and Decorate With Me part one. If you have not seen that video yet, I made a snowy backdrop on our fireplace with cotton balls and it turned out so cute, but I cannot reach our ceiling. Our ladder is not long enough. So I used a little grabber to hold onto the command hook 
and attach to these to the ceiling. So it's going to be super fun to take these down. We're probably just going to need to get a longer ladder, but for now I'm just going to enjoy everything being up because it is Christmas. So I'm just cleaning up everything now off of our dining table and getting ready to set up the scene that I'm going to be making in front of our TV console. It's like little Christmas snowy village and I got everything from Walmart. So these little houses were literally only like $2 a piece. They're so small, so detailed and they're really cute. The bottom of them actually have the holes so that you can put a light in them and then they kind of shine through their windows and glow. I got our snow for the snowy village and the lights. I got two sets of these since there are eight different buildings, a path of a ton of different trees. These lights are going to go underneath our snow to make our snow glow. So I'm starting by just putting down our snowy blanket and I was really hoping I could just use this for the ground on our village, but it looks so much better with the little snowflakes. They're just a little messy and at this point my goal was to just put down the village and then there were going to be wires and to cover the wires with the snow. So I will get to that, but for now I'm putting down just these white, they're almost kind of bluish really, um, lights underneath the snowy blanket so that it glows from underneath. It's something I had seen on Pinterest and I thought was super cute so I decided to give it a try and it does turn out looking super cute. These lights I don't recommend personally because they get really hot, like so hot that I'd be worried about them maybe causing a fire, especially since they're on like this snowy like fleece kind of blanket. So definitely try to get like LEDs or something that don't warm up <laughs> for these houses, but I do like the warm color for the inside of the houses because it makes them look like warm and cozy inside. The finishing touch was definitely these trees it added so much to this village I couldn't believe it because after just placing the houses down I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this village or not but the trees really add a lot of detail to it that it needed so after I'm done putting down all these little trees in our village I'm gonna put the snowflakes down and the snowflakes are actually made out of it's just like a whole bunch of really small plastic pieces and we have a 10 month old. So my initial thought was that I was just gonna have to use a little bit of it to cover the cords for the lights and that was gonna be it. But I ended up having to use a lot more snow than I thought I was going to and that's not a deal with a 10 month old and a three year old toddler in our house. So unfortunately I had to take all of this down. I'm gonna have to do something completely different here, but at least I was able to put it together and enjoy it for just the night and show you guys everything put together. I just love how cozy each of these houses look with the lights shining through all the windows and then the lights underneath the snow just created such a cool effect. So I really hope this gives you some ideas to do in your own village. So I hope this gives you the motivation you need to get your house ready for your guests and let's get started. Every single year, I am so grateful. We host about 20 people for Thanksgiving, so I always like to get our house in order. Of course, I'm starting here in our master bedroom, so I had all these frames taken down from our wall from when I was Christmas decorating. Our bedroom kind of just became the drop place for some of the Christmas decor that I had. I have some laundry just laying all around our master bedroom that I needed to put away. I like to start in here because it's usually not the messiest area of our home, so it's really easy to clean up and then I always feel fantastic after I've made my bed for whatever reason. It just gives you that motivation you need to keep going and then I love just completing a room because then that gives me more motivation to keep going. We also don't come into our master bedroom that much throughout the day, so after I've cleaned it, it usually stays this way until we go to bed at night. If you are new to watching my videos, I just wanted to take a second to introduce myself. My name is Shelby Murraybeth. I'm a mom to two. I have a daughter, her name is Cecilia, and she is almost three. And I have a son, his name is Owen, and he is 10 months old. I work part-time as a nurse. 
I know that's completely unrelated to the videos that I make because my heart is definitely at home here with my kids. So making these YouTube videos is definitely just a hobby for me that I really enjoy doing. So I make cleaning, organizing, and decorating videos. I upload every single Sunday. I've actually been doing this for a couple years now because I enjoy it so much. So for those of you listening and cleaning along with me, I'm still in our master bedroom just tidying up everything, putting all of our Christmas decorations that I did not use away, and I'm bringing them all the way into our storage closet. I also have this side table in here that is from our living room. We just had to take a few pieces of furniture out because our Christmas tree was too big, it took up too much space. So I'm gonna put this in my closet for now, that way I don't have to stare at it when I'm like coming into our master bedroom. I like things to be clean and tidy in here, especially when I'm going to sleep. It helps me sleep so much better. <laughs> So I'm going to be cleaning all throughout our house today as I prepare for hosting Thanksgiving. After I'm done here in our master bedroom, I'm going to move right into our master bathroom. When we're hosting this many people, usually we leave our master bedroom open so that people can use our master bathroom because we just have two bathrooms in our house. So this would be our second bathroom for anybody to use if they needed it. So I like to make sure it's nice and clean. But anyway, so all these frames here were on our wall where I put a gallery wall and where I want to put them, it's covered with Christmas decorations. So I'm putting it in the back of my closet for storage right now so that after I put all the Christmas stuff away, which is not anytime soon, I will be able to put those back up. I'm gonna finish our master bedroom by doing a really good vacuum before I move into our master bathroom. So I know I have a lot of subscribers that aren't in the United States, but here in the United States we celebrate Thanksgiving Day. It's an annual holiday where we celebrate the harvest and the other blessings of the past year. So the way we celebrate is by gathering all of our family together and having a giant feast and usually it involves turkey and ham and a whole bunch of side dishes, pies and dessert, it, the whole list goes on. So I'm just curious if in your country you have something similar and if you do, let me know in the comments. So I've been completely out of my normal routine for cleaning. I have like a morning cleaning routine video and a nightly cleaning routine video and when I like when I stick to those routines our house is like beautiful but I have been decorating for Christmas for the past like three weeks so our house has kind of gotten a little cluttered a little disorganized and today has just been my day to get things back in order so that I feel ready to host Thanksgiving so right now I'm finally getting our master bathroom in control and putting everything back where it's supposed to go. Everything has a home in here. I just don't always put it back where it, it belongs. <laughs> After our bathroom gets this like disheveled, it's so nice to put everything back because it's such a like refreshing before and after. I just feel like a new like woman after our bathroom is clean. After our bedroom is clean, after our bathroom is clean, I just feel ready to take on everything. <laughs> So I always do a really good cleanup of our house when we are hosting and I think that's one of the benefits of hosting is I'm like forced into getting our house back in order because when it gets like this out of control sometimes things just start to pile up and once that happens it's really easy to just keep it there and not worry about it because it's already like cluttered and it's already a mess so what's the difference but once you clean an area you want to keep it clean so if you were like hosting and you were forced into like cleaning and tidying up your home i feel like you're so much more i feel like you're so much more likely to just keep it nice and clean rather than it getting out of control again if that makes sense <laughs> Make sure to let me know if that makes sense because I feel like I'm explaining it very poorly right now but the gist is if it's clean it usually stays clean and if it's dirty it usually stays dirty. So I love when I'm in the mode of keeping things clean. So for those of you listening and cleaning along with me, I'm waving down my husband's vanity right now. I'm getting all those little hairs off of his sink from when he shaves. And then I'll be moving on to my vanity and wiping it down, cleaning the mirror, and then 
going into our water closet to do my least favorite task, cleaning the toilet, but it's gotta be done. Talking on the phone, I'll make you feel at home. Oh, when I got you by my side, what a night! So I'm moving into the water closet now and I love wiping everything down. I wipe down the air sprays, I wipe down the window ledge, everything is being wiped down with the Clorox disinfecting wipes. I feel like this is such an enclosed space that has the toilet in it so I just like wiping whatever I can down in here. Whenever I clean our toilet, I dust it off first with just a little bit of toilet paper and then I use the disinfecting wipe. It works so much better because if you don't dust anything off and then use the Clorox wipe, you're just like smearing around a whole bunch of dust and then you can't ever get it off. So that is what I like to do. I also wipe down our entire toilet every single time I clean it. It's super fast and easy when you stay on top of it. When the back of the toilet gets dirty and dusty, it takes so much longer when it gets really bad to clean it. So I just quickly wipe it down every single time I'm doing the toilet because it only takes like five seconds longer. I have been searching everywhere for the Scotch Bright brand for the toilet wand and I cannot find it anywhere. I had to get another pack of heads for our Clorox wand and I've talked in the past about how I don't like these because when you go inside the water of the toilet it just starts to fall off like for some reason they just don't hold up the scotch bright one like is so tight on the wand and has a little lip so that you can clean the lip of the toilet I love it but I have not been able to find one so after I finish vacuuming up our master bathroom here, I'm gonna move right into our dining room, which is covered in Christmas stuff. This is actually definitely not the worst of it. I think it was the night before this, I had taken a lot of the Christmas stuff and put it back into our storage unit. But this whole pile right here is Christmas lights that I need to bring to the garage. And then I just had a few odds and ends that I needed to put away still. So we are completely blessed living here in Florida. In November, we have fantastic weather. It's usually like highs of 80s or even 70s and it feels amazing outside. So we actually don't usually eat Thanksgiving dinner at our dining table here. We actually set up some on our back porch because we also have 20 people. So 20 people can't sit around this table. So it makes it really nice to put up some pop-up tables and then everybody gets to sit together at this really long table. And it's all outside in the nice fresh air. I am obsessed with hosting Thanksgiving. We've been doing it for the past few years now and it's definitely gotten easier every single year that we've done it. I will say that it is definitely harder because we have two kids this year. Last year I was just pregnant with Owen, but I was really close to having him. I was only a couple months away from him popping out, so I was waddling everywhere, but I also had a ton of help. Later in this video, I'll go over how I like to make our grocery list and everything beforehand. And I wish I could make everything ahead of time, that way I could film it for this video, but obviously I can't. <laughs> but we are usually just responsible for like the turkey, the ham, and then a couple other of the sides. And then everybody in our family will bring something like a different side or appetizer or dessert. This year I put together a Facebook event group with everybody in it. That way it was easier to coordinate meals and sides and everything so that nobody was bringing the same thing. 
But of course, there are always a few members of our family that don't use Facebook or are a little bit Facebook inept. <laughs> so I coordinate like, you know, over the phone with them and everything. But that's what I enjoy doing. I love putting things like this together, especially when it's family oriented. I love gathering all of our family together and I feel so blessed that we can do it at our house. So now that our dining table is nice and clean, our dining room is clean, I'm going to be moving right into the living room. And there are a few things I like to do in here before we have like a large gathering. So you can see some really large toys like this playhouse and everything. And I will take all of this and put it either in the playroom if there's room for it, or I'll put it in either like Cecilia or Owen's closet. That way it is just out of the way and nobody is tripping over it. Owen and Cecilia are usually entertained by everybody else that is visiting, so I don't have to worry about them wanting to play with these toys because they won't be. They'll be playing with their cousins or aunts and uncles. So anyway, I'm actually just putting on some pillowcase covers now onto our regular pillows. I got these off of Amazon. There are Christmas pillow covers, so they're white, which was perfect for my theme this year, which is a winter wonderland. So I had a few other things that I needed to kind of just put up. I decided to just put our stockings on our console here. I had done this last year and it looked really cute. I had actually done an entire like village scene on top here, but I had used all that tiny little snow. And of course we have little Owen here, so I could not leave that snow up there with him because he would just put it all in his mouth. So I had to take it all down and I got to figure out something else to do on the console here. Honestly, I'm probably gonna just end up leaving it empty, um, unless you guys can come up with an idea for me. Something that is a winter wonderland and maybe has to do with like a log cabin. So after I finish cleaning up our living room here and putting away the books for the 10th time because Owen loves pulling them out, I'm gonna be moving right into our kitchen in a little bit. And that is the heart of our home and it is where everything is going to be going down for Thanksgiving. So there's a few things I like to do in there to prep and get it ready. I definitely like to make sure our kitchen is nice and clean and ready to go for all the baking that is going to be happening. So this corner was really bothering me for whatever reason. It just felt very cluttered. So I took away a lot of the things that were sitting here that we are not using. They literally were just taking up space. So now that our dining room is nice and clean, our living room has been all picked up and straightened and ready for us to host Thanksgiving. I'm gonna be moving right into the hot mess that is our kitchen right now. So. I'll be cleaning up this small breakfast nook table that we usually eat at. Luckily our coffee bar isn't that bad. And then cleaning up all the clutter and everything that just gets left out on our counters. So before I even start cooking or doing anything for Thanksgiving in our kitchen, I always clear off everything from our counters that I can that is not serving like any purpose. So a lot of this decor will actually be put away just for Thanksgiving. It'll come right back out, but I'd like to have as much counter space as humanly possible because we just end up having so much food and different things. So it's easier to not have to move all that stuff around when the day comes. I had set up this hot chocolate bar on our coffee bar here, and we are definitely gonna have like these little 
to-go cups for everybody to make their own hot chocolate on Thanksgiving. I cannot wait for everybody to use this. I have like all the toppings set up for everybody to use. So we're gonna have so much fun. I'm also making sure our coffee is nice and stocked because this time of year, I feel like I run on coffee. <laughs> Down the chimney at the speed of light While we're dancing around the Christmas tree Hugging and kissing just you and me Carolers are singing outside our door Lovely songs we all heard before As they walk from house to house To wish us all a Merry Christmas Day Santa's busy saying ho, ho, ho. We're feeling jolly eating Christmas cake. And then we go skating on the frozen lake. Saying hi to every friendly face. And later we warm up by the fireplace. So this is the first time I will be sharing our new dishwasher, our last one kicked the bucket. It was about six years old, so we were ready for a new one. And I am obsessed with this. It's a Bosch dishwasher and it has this top rack on it. And it's for like silverware or small pieces. And in our old dishwasher, I did not have room for Owens bottles. This one I do, and it saves us so much time because we don't have to spend like 10, 15 minutes every single night washing Owens bottles. We can just throw them in the dishwasher. And I definitely give it credit to having that third rack because we have so many small pieces that would take up so much room on our top rack. But now we can put them all up there and then have so much more space. <laughs> it's still only a couple weeks like old for us. So I'm, I feel like I'm still getting in the groove of trying to figure out the best spot to put different things like I guess after a certain amount of time, you just start to know exactly where to fit certain items, like different pans, how they fit best inside your dishwasher. And I'm still trying to figure that out. It definitely takes a little bit of time. I hear the jingle bells, people singing about love. It feels like I'm a kid, like I'm forever young. And that's why I want to sing about the crib. On its way, a reason to hang around and celebrate this day. Everyone's smiling, and it's snowing. It's the time of year again. I'm happy you're here. My winter. After I clean out these sink drain catchers. I am going to clean out our sink. So I just use the Dawn like power spray bottle. This is actually a mixture I make myself. It's mostly water and then just like a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol and like 10 pumps of like dishwashing soap. It's so much cheaper than getting the refills for it and it works just as well. The Christmas on its way A reason to hang around And celebrate this day Everyone's smiling And it's snowing It's the time of year again I'm happy you're here My winter wonderland No It's the time of year 
winter wonderland. A winter wonderland. I'm going to finish up our kitchen by wiping down the counters and then I still have a few more things around our house that I definitely need to do and I will be sharing with you at the end of this video how I like to put together the grocery list and everything so that we can do that together and prep. <laughs> Just get it done, don't put it off, don't be going into the grocery store on Thanksgiving because you forgot something. Try and think ahead as far as you can. It is time to put this Halloween bucket away and I'm cleaning up the rest of our fridge that likes to just get a little cluttered, putting things on the side rather than the front before I start vacuuming here. So this is my favorite way to vacuum. Owen has been going through the clingiest stage. So I have my little side saddle and I am holding him and I'm able to vacuum our entire house while holding him and we are both happy. I've been looking into getting a robot vacuum. We have one, but it's at least four years old and it's like kick the bucket. It keeps beeping at me and yelling at me, like not moving. So I need to get a new one. So if you have a brand and a model that you would recommend hands down, let me know in the comments because I'm having such a hard time trying to decide on one. I definitely want one that has like the ability to block off rooms or areas. I'm a little hesitant about the ones that have the mopping function. Um, I feel like that would be nice, but I also like to steam mop instead of just a regular mop because I feel like that sanitizes our floors, but I guess I could do both. <laughs> but anyway, let me know if you have a brand that you 100% like recommend or if you have one to just stay away from. <laughs> So I am done vacuuming now and I'm going to empty the trash so that I can empty the container for a vacuum. Thinking about Thanksgiving and how it's kind of just a US and Canada holiday and a lot of other countries don't celebrate it made me think about like other things that we do here in the United States that might be different somewhere else. So I was thinking about like this trash. like. We just pull it to the end of our driveway and a trash truck comes and gets it every single week. So I'm curious if it's the same way in other countries or what you do with your waste. So this is our guest bathroom that I'm cleaning up now and I have purposely made it extremely easy to wipe down and clean. There's like hardly anything in this bathroom. It's the bathroom Cecilia and Owen use, of course Owen is only 10 months so he just gets a bath in here, but Cecilia is getting potty trained or she is potty trained for the most part. So I like to keep things just clean and like clutter free so that it's easy to wipe down everything. Especially since this is the bathroom our guests generally use, I want it to be nice and clean for them whenever they're visiting our home. 
don't stand and watch a choir performing all the Christmas songs that we love. Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love. And in a while, we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas a moment we'll fill with love and joy. So Cecilia's toilet, I generally wipe down every single night while she's getting her bath and I just use a disinfecting wipe like a Lysol wipe or something and wipe the whole thing down. It's super fast and easy, especially since I'm right here anyway, but I am wiping it down now. I had actually cleaned the inside of the toilet yesterday and I only do that about once a week because I don't want to waste too many Clorox wipes. I just like wiping down the area that Cecilia touches, especially since while she's sitting there on the toilet, she likes to hold on to the sides. So I just like to make sure it's as clean as possible. This is our Bizzle Steam Pro. I have all of my favorite cleaning tools linked in the description below, but I love like mopping our floors, steam mopping them. One, because it sanitizes everything, especially since Owen is crawling around everywhere on the floor, getting his hands all over everything and then putting them in his mouth. And then I love just mopping before guests arrive. We have a German Shepherd, his name is Django, and he tracks in so much dirt and debris and whatever else. He also has allergies, so his nose runs. Uh, it's, I, I feel like a little TMI, but anyway, our floors get covered in like his boogers. <laughs> so I'm mopping all of that up. The steam mop is also so easy to use and has heads that you can change out. Whenever I am close to the end of an area where I'll be changing out the mop, I generally use the rest of it in the bathroom because I don't like mopping in the bathroom and then mopping somewhere else in the house. I like changing out the head as soon as I'm done in the bathroom. I also like to start at the door and then work my way to the toilet because the toilet area is generally where you're gonna have like your drips and your drops from the toilet and I don't want to bring that into like a cleaner area if that makes sense. Here is our first mop head change and I have several heads for this to change out and they're so easy to change out but generally as long as I stay on top of all of our mopping on a regular basis I usually only use two heads. So I'm working my way now to our back door. This is where Django comes in and out. So he tracks in a lot of dirt over in this area and it's always a must mop area on a regular basis. I used to have a rug here, but the rugs right here wear out so fast because they just get covered in dirt and I wash them all the time. So I need to get a new one. So after I finish mopping here, I'm going to be putting together our grocery list for Thanksgiving. I explained a little bit earlier in the video how we put together our Thanksgiving meal, but just in case you missed it, we do the turkey and the ham and we do a couple sides. So like this year, I'm going to be making the corn casserole and the green ca bean casserole. I also got some rolls and all the drinks but everybody brings something with them when they come. So there will be a whole bunch of different sides and different things to pick from. And we lay it all out on our bar here. And it's just one big feast. Usually we do it kind of buffet style right here. So everybody will grab their plate, bring it to the buffet and serve themselves and then come back and sit at the table. So I'm grabbing our recipe binder from our cabinet now and I'm just flipping through these looking for our Thanksgiving recipes. So I'm pulling out the green bean casserole and the corn casserole so that I can write down all the ingredients that I need to get while I'm at the grocery store. I also like to make sure that I write down how much turkey I need, how much ham I need and everything that I need for those, including like a turkey bag because we like to cook our turkey inside a Reynolds bag. And then I usually use a lot of disposable cookware so like we'll get a big turkey dish so that 
we can cook our turkey in that rather than having to clean a huge roasting pan. We will still have a ton of dishes, but I like to make it as minimal as possible. That way we aren't being taken away from our family and we get to enjoy more time together rather than cleaning. I got all of our Christmas decor out. I like to take absolutely everything out and organize it on my dining room table. And as I take things out, I always try my best to group things together that I think are going to go in the same room. So for today's video, I am focusing on our fireplace and our coffee bar, which is our hot cocoa bar during the winter months. So as I take things out, I'm grouping whatever I think are going to go into those areas together. We will also be doing our kitchen and a few other areas in our house, but this is just part one of my Christmas decorate with me. So definitely make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know as soon as part two is up. But I have all of my fall decor down. Our house looks so empty, but it is not going to look that way for very long. I'm actually going to start here on our fireplace. So I have lots of layers on our fireplace. The first layer is going to be these snowflakes, and I'm going to put these on the top, attach them with these command hooks, which are my best friend during this time of year. I am originally from Michigan, so we used to go visit my family up there all the time when I was a kid for Christmas, and most of the time we had a beautiful white Christmas. So that is what I'm used to around this time of year, but now we live in Florida and we don't get any snow, so I love bringing it inside with my decor. So I made these last year and they look like snow falling and I think they're absolutely adorable. They were so easy to make, but it's just fishing line attached to a little command hook. I used hot glue to attach it and then I used hot glue to attach cotton balls. I threaded them through with a needle through each cotton ball. I tried to make some bigger, some smaller, and I think they are just so fun. They are a little tedious to make, but it's something you could definitely do while sitting in front of the TV and watching your favorite Christmas movie or show and I was able to save them again to use this year so I'm sure I'm going to be using these for a long time coming. So I'm using a little grabbing hook to attach them to the ceiling because I don't like going all the way up to the top on my ladder. I'm slightly scared of heights. I go pretty big on our mantle. So this piece of garland I got from Walmart and they sold out of this garland so quickly last year. I actually have not been into Walmart this year to see what they have or if they have this garland again, but I really hope they do because it was only like $10 and it's absolutely gorgeous. These picks I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm just draping them over the side here. I love getting picks from Hobby Lobby. These ones are also from there. There are so many different ways you can use picks, but I'm just using this to fluff up the corner of our fireplace here. I love the look of the garland just flowing over the side of the fireplace. I'm also going to be putting some stockings on the other side, on the right side of the fireplace. So overall, it really gives it a nice balanced look. I have quite a few of these small little trees covered in snow. So I'm putting those all around this mantle. And then I have a little sign that says, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And this is just like a, one of those $5 signs from Target. And I think it is just so simple and so cute. Next, I'm just gonna be adding a few icicles to the bottom of this garland. These are from the dollar store. I have two small kids running around, okay? So these are plastic, so I'm not worried about them breaking. And I also want to put some stockings here. So normally I would use these heavy duty like stocking holders, but I'm worried they're going to pull on them and it's going to fall on their face. So I'm using my best friend again, my command hooks to hang all of these stockings. And I'm going to share with you the easiest way to elevate your stocking decor. Just grab a pick. This one's from Hobby Lobby and put it inside the stocking. It really just makes it pop and look, in my opinion, very professionally decorated, but it's literally the easiest addition ever.
We are moving on to our coffee bar. This year I took a little shortcut. I didn't freehand my chalk drawing. I used my projector so that I could get a brief outline on everything and then filled it all in after. This saved so much time. Whenever I'm like freehanding any chalk drawings, I always have a hard time getting things to be symmetrical. So there's a lot of erasing and redoing things. So this just cut the time in half for me. I will share a link to this picture. I found it on Pinterest, so there will be a link for it in the description of this video if you are looking for a reference picture as well. And if you're not very good at drawing, definitely get a projector and try doing this yourself. The chalk drawing is done now and I brought over all the decor that I think I'm going to use over here. This is our hot cocoa bar in the winter. It's generally our coffee bar, but I love putting a little hot cocoa station here. I make it feel like it's in a log cabin. That's kind of the feel I'm going for is I'm just sitting inside a log cabin. It's snowing outside and I can just sip on my hot cocoa. I got these picks from Hobby Lobby this year. I decided to use them all around the garland here. I was trying to decide how filled in I wanted to make this garland because I could cover it with ribbon. I could cover it with more picks. I could really fill it in, but then I wouldn't really have that greenery and I'm going for that log cabin feel like I want the evergreens around me so I didn't fill it in quite as much as I probably could have but I think it was a really good balance. I also got these little holly picks from Hobby Lobby this year as well and I'm just using that to fill in the rest of the areas. And I really think these picks were a super simple and easy addition to my decor this year. We are going to move on to the hot cocoa station, my favorite area. I got this runner from Hobby Lobby, which if you have not caught on yet, that is my favorite place to shop for Christmas decor. This cutting board I have just with my regular cutting boards, but I like to use it as the basically table for my hot cocoa station, that hot cocoa sign I got from Hobby Lobby, and I am starting with some marshmallows, of course, and some peppermints. I'm putting some chocolate chips in another container, as well as some white chocolate chips. Basically anything I can add to our hot cocoa to make it even more delicious. It's also so much better with some chocolate wafers. Those things are so addicting. And I'm filling some smaller glasses with some sprinkles. I got all of these glasses from Hobby Lobby. They're in their regular craft section and they do go on sale sometimes. I love final touches and little details. So I'm gonna use this red and white ribbon around each of these glasses and tie a little bow on each of them. It's just gonna give it that final touch that just looks absolutely adorable. I got these little serving wooden spoons from Hobby Lobby. It's in their party section. And of course we cannot forget the hot cocoa. I have this little basket in the shape of a sleigh that fits them perfectly. Now I'm going to be decorating my tiered tray. I am obsessed with really filling in tiered trays. I think it's so fun to play with decor until it looks good. This tiered tray I'm going to be filling in with different decor pieces that have to do with hot chocolate and of course peppermints and some of my favorite mugs. I've realized though that now that I've used these mugs in my tiered tray, I cannot actually drink from them. Or at least it makes it a lot more difficult because I filled them with some decor pieces. So I'd have to clean them out every single time. So now I have a really good excuse to go out and find a few more mugs. Tiered trays can definitely be very tricky to decorate, but my biggest tip is just to keep moving things around until it looks good. Can't tell here, but I did redo this tray at least two or three times before I got this like final shot. Just have a few more touches to this area before we move on, but I'm bringing over my coffee maker and I'm just adding a few final touches to our coffee jar. I just drew a little candy cane on the chalkboard area and I'm tying more of that ribbon to the top of it. 
for just those final little details that I love so much. So on the top here, I'm actually going to add a few more signs. They're all those reds and whites to match all of those peppermint candies. Let me give you a Christmas moment we'll fill with love and joy. So beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. Moving on to our kitchen area, and I'm doing the least glorious part of Christmas decorating, and that is fluffing all of the garland. I like putting this on top of our cabinets. I think it's an easy way to just draw your eye up. It's also just like such a simple addition to the kitchen, but makes such a big impact. I also love that it's out of the way. I don't like having a lot of decor in our kitchen because I do cook in here a lot and I just don't like to have that decor in the way as I'm cooking. So just this addition to the top of our cabinets and just below my countertop here is my favorite thing to add for Christmas decor. So to hang them, I'm actually using command hooks. I leave them up here year round. So once they are sticking there, I keep them there. And some do pop off, especially there underneath the cabinet because my kids like to play with them. But anyway, I'm hanging a wreath on top here and I love the look of the ribbon hanging down the center, that big chunky ribbon, but I still like to open my cabinet. So here I just used a command hook to hang it from the piece and then I have some wired ribbon on the top to make it look like it is hanging from the cabinet. But I won't have any issues opening or closing that cabinet. Now we're going to put together a really quick and simple centerpiece. All of this is from Hobby Lobby. All these picks are from Hobby Lobby. I did bring over these that had these pieces for a while, but I didn't actually end up using them. So while I was in Hobby Lobby, I already figured out how I wanted to put together this centerpiece. So I'm just quickly throwing all those picks together and I'm going to put them inside the pitcher. I actually got this picture and that cutting board from Hobby Lobby for fall and used it for a fall centerpiece. So I love how versatile this centerpiece can be. You could probably do it for any season. So everything always looks better in groups of three, or in this case, I decided to do just the picture and the centerpiece. Now I just have a few extra touches around our kitchen. I really like to keep things nice and simple in here. I'm going to be starting here in our master bedroom, decorating it for Christmas. I love making it super warm and cozy in here. My favorite part of decorating our room is putting up a Christmas tree in here. I love going to sleep with the Christmas tree lights on. It just it gives it that Christmas ambiance and I just get all those warm cozy feelings whenever I am just laying there looking at the lights on our Christmas tree. So right now I'm taking off all the sheets on our bed. I do change them out into a red and white checkered sheet pattern for Christmas. You can find Christmas sheets like at Home Goods or TJ Maxx. Those are the like most affordable ones I've found. Um, Target also makes some adorable Christmas sheets and Amazon of course has so many options when it comes to sheets for Christmas. So I'm putting the garland on our headboard first because I've learned in the past that if I do it after I put on the sheets, then I end up laying in a whole bunch of tiny little beads that fall off of this garland. So I like putting the garland up and then I will actually vacuum away all the bits and pieces that fall off from this garland. I got this piece of garland from Hobby Lobby. I just love the frosted look on it. I am all about snow for Christmas and frost. But adding garland to your headboard does such wonders for your room. This alone with some Christmas bedding is one of the easiest ways you can just bring Christmas into your bedroom. I don't know about you, but I just love the image of a little girl sitting or sleeping on the couch and looking up at the Christmas lights, waiting for Santa to come, but I don't like sleeping on the couch myself, so I like bringing it all into our bedroom, which is just one of the reasons I love decorating in here so much for Christmas. Yeah, well, 
Before I put the sheets back on our bed, I'm just vacuuming up all those small little beads that fell off of the garland. They only fall off as I'm playing with the garland and just trying to get it attached to our headboard. So once it's up there, I don't have to worry about them falling on the bed again, but it's just that initial installation and then I just vacuum them all up and I don't have to worry about them again until I take it down. So I got these sheets off of Amazon. I've had them for a few years now actually, and I've been able to use them every single year, and I still plan on using them for years to come. It does start out looking a little bit like a picnic table, but once I put our comforter on, it looks a little bit more like an accent piece and it ties everything together so much better, especially once I start putting the pops of plaid on our Christmas tree. Can't wait for you guys to see that in a little bit. And then while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate bar. So I just started decorating in our master bedroom probably about three years ago now, maybe four. Anyway, I want to know whether or not you've decorated in your bedroom before. And if you have a theme, definitely let me know what it is. I love seeing how everybody else decorates each of their rooms. These are definitely my favorite videos to watch, which is why I love making them for you guys to see too. So yes, please let me know in the comments whether or not you decorate your room and let me know what theme you go for. Making plans, what we're gonna do I feel so blessed that I can be with you Cause God knows that I've been longing for ya I just wanna hold you close You know the stars are shining just for you Let's take a walk and we can follow the moon Not till we reach a place we can stay Maybe kiss a bit and dream away And in a while we're gonna go so this set of sheets that I got off of Amazon, it came with the fitted sheet as well as the flat sheet and two pillowcases, which is perfect. I like putting the pillowcases with the plaid on them behind my white ones. So it tones them down just a little bit, but I still get that pop of the red and white for Christmas. So the white pillowcases are my original bedding that I use all the time, as well as our white comforter. So it's really easy to add just different colored sheets to it. Everything matches. I've thought about getting other sheets for different holidays too, but I don't know if I've gone that holiday crazy yet, but maybe one day I will because it really just bring just so much happiness into something so just minimal, but it's also, we sleep in our bed every single day. So just that small amount of happiness coming from sheets, I think is something that can amount to something very significant. Anywhere I have year-round decor, I usually switch it out with something Christmas related. For me, that's the easiest way to bring in some Christmas decor that doesn't feel too cluttered. Now I'm bringing in my Christmas tree. So this Christmas tree used to be our main Christmas tree. It was my husband and I's first tree that actually came from my parents. So it was a hand-me-down. So I'm not really sure where this tree came from or where you could find it, but I definitely recommend just looking at Facebook Marketplace or anything of the likes for a hand-me-down Christmas tree if you don't have one in your room, especially because they are so inexpensive when you buy them that way. So I love using this tree in our room because it fits so much better than any other tree would because of these branches and how they are installed on here. So there are these really long pieces that go all the way down and you just thread each one into those holes there. So I leave all of the back ones off so that I can push it as far up against the wall as I possibly can. And it still looks full and it fits in our bedroom so much better this way. 
I am all about using things that I already have before going out and buying something completely new. And I hope I inspire you guys to do the same. So instead of going out and buying like a thin tree to fit in here because I want a Christmas tree in our room, I was able to alter this one to work just as well. I am genuinely interested to hear if you have an artificial Christmas tree, I would love to hear about how long you have had it. While I was growing up, we had the same exact Christmas tree every single year from the day I was born. It was this gorgeous 10 foot tree, but it was not pre-lit, so it lasted you know, 20 years until I ended up moving out. So we had the same exact Christmas tree every single year for 20 years. And it felt more nostalgic putting it out rather than getting a newer updated Christmas tree. Now that I have our Christmas tree all fluffed and ready to go, this one's pretty easy to fluff. Luckily it doesn't have too many branches. I am going to put all of our lights on our Christmas tree. I feel like I might be in the minority here, but I prefer our Christmas trees not to be pre-lit. I really don't like the idea of having a Christmas tree and then the lights go out on it and then it renders it completely useless. Our larger tree that we keep in our living room actually used to be pre-lit, but we were able to get it from somebody that was gonna trash it because the lights went out. So we cut off all the lights on it and now it's just this gorgeous Christmas tree that we got for free. And I will be able to share that gorgeous living room Christmas tree with you guys in a part three of my Christmas decorate with me. So here is a quick reminder to hit that thumbs up if you are enjoying this video and to subscribe so that you don't miss part three and definitely check the description for part one if you have not seen it already. So putting Christmas lights on a Christmas tree can definitely be an art form. I will generally go up and down instead of all the way around on a Christmas tree. I think it makes it so much easier to install lights. I will share a really good tutorial on installing Christmas lights on your Christmas tree in the description. Essentially, you just wrap it around each branch as tight as you can and you start at the tip and go all the way to the base of the branch and then weave in and out. It will really make your tree glow and just shine from within. I will be able to give a better representation of what that looks like on our tree in our living room. So the tree in our bedroom, I love putting meaningful ornaments like this one. It came from the top of the rock when my husband proposed to me. I also have different glass ones that have like our tassels in them and basically any breakable ornaments that are very meaningful for us, I leave in our bedroom here. I think it's really nice having the sentimental ornaments here in our bedroom, but the main reason I actually have them in here is because my kids will break them. A lot of the ornaments that are on our living room Christmas tree get played with. So instead of leaving these breakable ornaments in storage where nobody can see them, we can at least see them here in our bedroom. So I had decided I really wanted to fill up this Christmas tree this year, make it full, beautiful, and fun. So I'm starting by cutting off probably a two and a half foot section of each of these like white garland pieces. I had gotten these last year when I was trying to do a really big like snowy like winter theme. I had gotten them from Walmart and they are an incredibly affordable piece of decor. So I'm really happy that I'm reusing them again this year, but I'm going to kind of use them with my ribbon around the tree. So I'm first putting these in and then I'm gonna be putting some red ribbon in with it. And then I'm also gonna use a plaid ribbon so that it really ties in with our bedding. So this is red wired edge ribbon and I'm just using a Sharpie highlighter. You can use like any large pen or um, anything similar to roll your ribbon nice and tight. And then you just kind of like take it out so that it looks like this really long, like curly piece of ribbon. And I cut off, it was probably like a four foot piece. And then once I curled it up, it probably made it to like two feet. 
and I'm just putting it in sections around our tree wherever I think it's gonna look good filling in different areas. I used to just use like really long pieces of ribbon and I would start at the top and bring it down and I cannot tell you how long it used to take me to put ribbon on our tree. So I definitely recommend using them in smaller sections and then just placing them in and around the tree wherever they look good. So I'm not done with the ribbon yet, but I decided to use some more of my white ornaments to really fill in the rest of the tree. So I'm using my largest white ornaments that I have first and then filling in some of the more like bare areas. I am all about reusing the same decor, but in different ways around each season. So all of these ornaments I had actually used on a garland around our front door from last year. So now I'm just using them all to really fill in this tree and make it so fun. Not only is it super pricey to switch up themes every single year, I think it can definitely be very wasteful. So I really love using decor in different ways just to make it new for each year, but also keep the affordability in check. <laughs> and I've just been so much more conscious about the waste that we are producing. So now I'm filling in some areas with some plaid ribbon. I'm actually just making it into a little bow, like just one little loop and then tucking it into some of the more bare areas. The plaid from this ribbon is really gonna help tie the tree in to our bedding and make everything look very cohesive. After I get the ribbon tucked into different areas, I do add another loop to each of the one loops that I'm putting in right now, if that makes sense. And I think adding that extra loop to each of them made them feel a lot more intentional, but adding a ribbon to your tree to fill it in, I think is one of the most affordable ways to add decor to your tree. I decorate this one very differently from how I decorate our main living room tree. I decorate our living room tree very differently than this tree. The living room tree is definitely very traditional. We use so many like nostalgic ornaments. We always get ornaments from any trips that we go on together. So vacations or places that we've gone together with our family. It's so fun to bring those ornaments out because they just bring up all the memories from that trip each year and that's what I want to be reminded about at the end of the year. I want to remember all of the trips that we took together, all the time that we spent together. We also decorate the tree with different crafts that Cecilia and Owen have made the past three, almost four years now. So I love seeing Cecilia's little handprint and I will be able to share all those ornaments with you in part three when I decorate our Christmas tree in our living room. As long as I spend this day with you, mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. Making plans, what we're gonna do? I feel so blessed that I can be with you. Cause God knows that I've been long. I am getting really close to finishing off this tree, but I really wanted to fill it in just a little bit more, so I still had some more like white ornaments and I'm just using them to fill in all the blank areas where there's more greenery. This is the most filled in I've ever made this tree. I really wanted to try it out and I actually really like it. I'm definitely going to try out the technique that I used for putting the ribbon on this tree on our main living room tree this year. I think it's going to look super fun and super full with all of our traditional ornaments. Kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day with you. Mm -mm, so beautiful, kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. So now I'm just putting another piece of folded ribbon in and around near wherever I put the other one. 
make them look a little bit more intentional. I've also seen them in pairs of three and I think they look so cute, but it is definitely a super easy way to fill in parts of your tree. In the comments, definitely let me know if you have used ribbon on your tree, if that's your preferred. I actually don't see too much ribbon on trees anymore, so I think it's very interesting, but I really had a lot of fun putting the ribbon on this tree. I especially love all of the curly pieces of ribbon. As a final touch on this tree, I'm just putting on little tiny ornaments to the very tips of each of the branches. I had some that were clear that I thought looked super cute on the end of the branches. All of these white ornaments and the clear ornaments came from Hobby Lobby. They have the shatterproof ornaments that look like they're glass, but are not. I could drop these. I don't have to worry about them. They will not break. I loved decorating very traditionally, so I am using an angel as a tree topper. I use an angel or a star. Those are my two go-tos for the top of our tree. Definitely let me know in the comments what you top your tree with. I'd be super curious to see what the average is. Now that our bedroom is nice and cozy, I'm going to be moving over here to our living room, which looks super empty after I took off all of our fall decor. I have a lot of super easy additions that I will be adding in and around here in our living room, and then I'll be moving into our dining room. So I just put a table runner that I got from Hobby Lobby onto our console here. It is the same table runner as our hot cocoa bar. So if you haven't seen our hot cocoa bar yet, that's in part one. And one of the easiest ways to make a centerpiece is just using the table runner with some garland across it. This garland I actually got from a secondhand store. So I'm not entirely sure where it's from, but it looks so real. And I'm just gonna use some fairy lights I'm gonna tie them all around on this garland and I really think any fairy lights added to decor just makes them feel so magical. I got these fairy lights off of Amazon. Amazon definitely has a lot of options when it comes to the size or length that you want for your fairy lights. So I've also seen them at Walmart and Home Depot or Lowe's, so they're definitely not very hard to come by. some decor that I've had throughout the years just in and around our bookcase and I had spent a lot of time just playing with the decor here and trying to figure out where it looked best. I really didn't want to go out and buy a whole bunch of new decor so I was just trying a whole bunch of different things with decor that I already had and then I just kept playing around with it until I thought it looked good. But definitely don't think that you need to go out and buy a whole bunch of new decor to make it look fun and new. Just try rearranging decor, play with it and have fun, be creative, and try to think of new ways to use your decor. So for fall, I had already put away all of our regular decor items, but typically I will just replace 
whatever regular decor I have with something that is Christmas related instead. And then all of our regular decor goes into the Christmas bin. And then that bin goes into storage. And my heart's going boom, boom, boom. You're so beautiful. Another thing I like putting out each year are Christmas books. These ones I like putting on the lower shelves because Cecilia and Owen can reach these shelves so I don't typically put too much decor on them. These upper shelves are the only ones that are away from tiny little fingers. Oh, oh, when I got Pillows take up so much space, so I got these pillow covers to go right over the ones that we already have for our living room, just to make them a little bit more festive. And the pillowcase hardly takes up any space in my holiday storage. I'm moving on to our dining room now, and I actually interchange the centerpiece on our dining room table with the one that goes on our TV console. The reason I do this is because I feel like most of the time centerpieces get in the way when you're trying to have dinner, so we typically take them off the table anyway. So this is the same centerpiece that I had just done on our TV console, but I brought it over to our dining room table to show you what it looks like here. And then I just add a few candles to really make it into like a dinner centerpiece. And these candles are from Hobby Lobby. They're actually part of their fall decor, so I had got them on sale. So whenever we're eating dinner, I just move this centerpiece right back over to our TV console over in our living room. So it's really nice that it has two spots. I always want my decor to look good, but I mostly want it to be functional. This was my favorite addition to our Christmas decor last year. So I had put up this whole collage wall here in our dining room so that I can enjoy all of our pictures all year round. But during Christmas, I changed them out to all of our favorite Christmas family pictures. So I had already printed out some last year. I just put them in the back of the frame and now I'm just putting them right into the front and hanging them right back up. I will be printing out a few new ones this year that we took last year. So I just think this is such a fun and easy way to add Christmas into your home. I did time myself with changing out each of the pictures because I was curious and it took me a total of 15 minutes to change out all the pictures on this wall to Christmas. For watching if you enjoyed today's video please hit that thumbs up for me i cannot tell you how much i appreciate it every single time someone hits that button definitely hit that subscribe button if you are new without further ado i will see you all next week in a brand new video bye